Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmidt and welcome to another game analysis. Today I would like to share another game from the Austrian Bundesliga. It was the very last round and I was playing against international master Gabor Natsch from Hungary. So the situation before the game was like this. We were on 6 points, 16 points and there were two other teams which were also fighting against relegation. So we were fighting against relegation with my team Götzis. And the other two teams had six points and five points. So we were all very close. And we definitely, well, a win would be very good in the last round for us to stay in the league. So this was a very important game. Well, obviously not only I was playing, but also five other, my colleagues in the team, my team members. But obviously every game is important. So let's get to the game. I was playing with the white pieces and I opened with e4. And he was playing the Sicilian, more specifically the Taimanov, which is knight c6 here, knight c3 and queen c7. Now I went bishop e3 and here the main move is a6. But he played knight f6, which I had looked at. And I decided to go f4. And we actually both followed uh, the theory pretty for pretty long. Knight db5, queen a5, e5. It's very concrete here. Knight d5, bishop d2. Black takes on c3. Pawn takes c3. So white gets slightly, not maybe slightly, but <laughs> bad pawn structure. But this is all theory, and we are both. We both knew this. So when c4 hitting the queen, the queen drops back to d8, bishop d3. So let's maybe for a moment take a look what is what has happened so far. White has the worst pawn structure, obviously, but he has much better development. All his minor pieces are all already in the game, and he has more space with his pawn on e5. There's one problem though, that I cannot castle here, because black is controlling the g1 square, so I cannot castle short set at the moment. That is really unpleasant. Alright, I still knew this position and just going for it here with queen h5. Threatening mate, black goes g6, queen h6. And now I just, it's very simple, attack in chess, I want to go h4, h5, checkmate the guy, but obviously black has a word to say. And he played d5, e takes d6, and up to this point I had looked at the, at the position beforehand and I only considered e5 and queen f6 here. But he had something else prepared, which is very interesting, it's to move a6, and well, it was rather unpleasant over the board to come up against a very well prepared opponent who still knew the position and knew what was going on. So a6, I was on my own, and my knight is attacked, so the options are limited. I play knight c3, which is logical, <laughs> retreating with the knight. The best move is though bishop c3, when black has to defend against the checkmate. And he should go e5. And after a game, my opponent told me that with the knight c7, there's a queen takes d6, black gives up a whole rook, but he has very nice play here on the dark squares. And this actually looks pretty dangerous for white. Might be okay, might be even better. I didn't look at it much further. But practically, <laughs> this is not the position you want in a game with the white pieces in an important match. So I think knight c3 was a good retreat choice at this point. Let's go back to the moment. Here we are, knight c3. Now he goes bishop d4, and the bishop is just such a monster on d4. Still controlling g1, looking in this direction, pinning the knight, and most importantly, helping the black king to defend. Just great piece on d4 here. Here went c5 to protect my pawn on d6, and also luring my opponent into tempting my opponent to take on c5, which he didn't obviously, because then suddenly my knight becomes free and can go to e4, and most importantly to g5 and join the attack. This would be very good for me. And he played a very good move now. 
after after c5 he played f5 i didn't see this move coming at all that's very strong he just takes away this e4 square from my knight and also opens up the seventh rank to defend against any threats on h7 very strong and i'm not having any obvious follow-up here to continue the attack if i go h4 which would be a move i would like to make to open up the h file he can go queen f6 hitting my knight on c3 note that he couldn't go queen f6 immediately because then i could unpin with tempo attacking the queen on f6 but with f5 played this is now possible but still this might have been the best line because here which i also considered for a moment i can go h5 bishop takes c3 h takes g6 now he has to take on d2 with check first before he takes on g6 otherwise his bishop hangs in the end so he takes on d2 with check king takes a threatened checkmate so he needs to take with the queen queen takes pawn takes and rook h6 and i'm ready to double on the h file but this should be still better for black but he has to find knight b8 nice regrouping of the knight bringing the knight to f6 and black should be better also i didn't want to go for this because i felt like okay this is <laughs> not giving me any winning chances really so i decided to go rook b1 unpinning my knight also keeping an eye on the pawn on b7 he went bishop takes c5 now you can do this because i cannot play knight e4 any longer and i went h4 but now bishop d4 back once again very unpleasant because when i go h5 now ready to attack and checkmate well just in time black forces white to trade the queens so i didn't do this because here my pawn structure gets weakened worsened and uh, he just picks up the pawn on d6 and black is up a pawn and i'm not creating enough counterplay so here i thought for a very no excuse me here i thought for a very long time because i realized i'm in trouble i don't have any good moves i mean not any obvious moves to improve my position h5 is the move I want to make, but like I just showed you, it's no good. And black, well, he can play different moves, but I was thinking probably b5 is a good way because I'm still keeping taps on this pawn. So I played a4. I think practically a very good move to start b5. And here he played bishop g7. Queen g5, and now he played bishop f6. Actually, what we kind of both missed is that he can just take on d6 right now. The point is that after h5, he can now go bishop g7, queen g5, bishop f6, and after queen g3, he can go g5. And I cannot take because my queen is unprotected. And also I cannot I can go to h6, but now g5, f takes g5 wins the queen, and otherwise my queen is still in this very delicate situation on h6. So this is also not that great. But actually, while I'm talking about this, maybe there's not that much of a difference because here I can also like in did in a similar situation in the game play knight e2 and um, this would probably more or less lead to the same thing here anyways here he also after a4 he also had some other options um, because like I said it's not clear what I'm doing next I'm also thinking rook f7 maybe rook b8 and maybe just going into this end game like let's say knight e2 bishop g7 queen g5 takes takes rook d8 black will pick up the pawn d6 i do have some compensation because i might have played against the pawn h7 still the pawn b7 requires protection but it's black who's pressing for a win that's clear all right let's see the game bishop g7 queen g5 also here black could take but here it's a little bit different it's an improved version for me and i was thinking maybe i even have this move a5 
the point of rook takes d6, I can go knight a4 and I bring my knight to b6, so c5, this looks rather attractive. And if black takes on a5, then I can go knight a4, hit the knight on a5, and knight c6, knight b6, rook b8. And also felt like to me I, I should have some compensation here, because knight takes c8 is in the air, and maybe just bishop e3 here, something along these lines. And uh, if rook takes d6, I can take on c8 and take on b7. And with the bishops, I should have enough compensation here in my active rook. This should be okay. But he didn't take on g5. He played bishop f6, queen g3, and now took on d6. And now h5, we already looked at. Not a good move because of g5. So I need to prepare it, and I play knight e2. Why am I preparing it? Because now my queen is protected, that means if something, then h5, g5, and I can take, and queen takes g3, knight takes g3 is possible. And here my opponent chose the wrong plan, it seems like. He played king h8. What he should do is maybe rook f7. Rook f7, h5, rook g7, h takes g6, rook takes g6, and now queen h3, and now just defend the pawn on h7 by going, I don't know, queen e7. The point is that I'm not able to go g4, which is a very important break for me, because here black just can take with the rook on g4. And then it's not that clear how my attack continues, develops. So this would have been good defensive setup, and black should be better. But already here, it's not that easy for black. I think beforehand there were better options for him. For example, going into some sort of this endgame, forcing me to trade off queens. Okay, now you play king h8, h5, and he took on h5. And here I was very happy because getting my rook into the game, rook h5, I can put on pressure on the h7 pawn, and I think after b5, his position is just lost. But I think already in a practical game, this is almost impossible to defend at this point. So, queen h3, rook a7, that was his plan with b5 to bring the rook into the game. But the problem is here for black to have this move, and it's just so strong, so incredibly strong. Play g4, and everything comes with tempo g4, g5. And all my pieces are kind of perfectly placed. The bishop is very strong on d3, the knight is covering the king, the rook is ready to take on b5 if necessary, and um, black cannot create any counterplay. That's the main problem for him. He cannot even go knight d4 because it runs into bishop b4. So at this point I knew my position must be very, very good. If not to say completely winning. Because just all my pieces are doing such a good job here. He played rook g8, and well, my first intention was to go g5, I mean, this was my plan, but he plays bishop d4, and I didn't see an obvious way to continue. I mean, I could even take on d4, and he would have these weaknesses on the long diagonal, but still, there's no immediate KO. So I looked and I saw this move, which is, I think, very very unpleasant for black rook h6 because black just doesn't have a good way to to cope with this threat of me taking the bishop he played bishop d4 but if he moves the if he protects the bishop let's say rook f7 okay this is no good anyway because i can go g5 g6 uh, this immediately game over but also after okay let's say queen d8 I go, let's say, g5, okay, bishop d4, and, um, okay, I just improved the position of my rook here to h6. Not sure what <laughs> what I was planning on. Maybe I can just go knight takes d4 now and queen e3. This actually looks strong. Bishop c3, queen e5, and black has very big problems on the dark squares. Something along these lines. I mean, I'm sure there are many ways. Anyways, he played bishop d4, and now we see my idea why I put my rook on h6, because I'm pinning the pawn on e6. First, my intention was to take on f5 the bishop, 
threaten rook takes h7, but he plays rook g7. White is winning here, but the game continues. But then I realized, why not take with the g pawn? First, this looks scary because I'm opening up the g file against my king, but the knight, the knight on e2 does a wonderful job protecting my king and covers g1, so no problem. So g takes f5. And now, well, what can he do? <laughs> it's just very sad position for black. He played rook g7, but I can just keep on keep on eating, eating pawns here, grabbing pawns. Takes on e6. Now I have two connected pawns here in the center. I opened up my bishop, and black still has no counterplay. The only problem here, I was I was low on time. I had maybe five, six, seven minutes, so still nervous to get this one home rook e7 but the moves are pretty obvious right i just push f5 f6 and he went knight e5 now i have to be careful not to go f6 that would be a mistake i think because then black takes on d3 and he can take on e6 and i don't have a winning move here i first thought that f7 was winning here the point is after rook takes h6, I have queen takes d4, which is very nice. Queen takes d4 and f8, queen mate. But he can just go rook takes f7 and after rook takes e6, which first looks like a winner, because after queen or bishop takes, I take on d4 check. Black has this intermediate check on f2. And this would be a very unfortunate turn of events after queen takes e6. Black is definitely not worse, I was about to say, yeah. Well, I mean, this is still pretty crazy tactical. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe there's still something, but maybe not. Okay, this whole mess was definitely, is definitely not necessary at all. So let's come back to this wonderful position and see what I did instead. I played bishop g5. Threatening bishop f6, threatening the rook. He went rook g7, and I went bishop f6. Actually, e7 would have ended the game a little bit faster, but just slipped my mind. I also didn't see a move for him after bishop f6, because I'm threatening rook takes h7, followed by mate. And if he plays knight takes d3, then I just go queen takes d3. I'm also pinning the, the bishop, and just everything is over. But I miss that he can still continue a game of king g8, avoiding rook takes h7. But okay, I can pick up the exchange. But still, you want to end the game somehow, especially if you're in time trouble. You don't want to still have a mess on the board. And I was happy to find f6 here. Well, black has to do something now because he cannot allow these pawns on the 6th rank, but there's nothing he can do. If he takes on e6, I just take on g7 and I pin on the 6th rank and win. So my opponent tried bishop c3 check, distracting my knight, but I checked and I can just take. Knight takes, knight takes d3 check, c takes d3, rook g1 check, but okay. It's probably no surprise that this is not working for, for black. You play king e2 and he went rook g3. This was actually my 40th move here. If queen e5 check, I can just go knight e4 and black can win back a rook, but in the process he loses the king as I'm coming for the checkmate. So in this position, there's nothing to do, rook g3, last try, threatening queen takes d3 and the queen, but I have to simple move queen f5, defending my pawn d3, and if rook g2 now, I'm just king f1, black is out of checks, and then it's going to be my turn, move queen takes h7 and f7, e7, you know, and so on. So, after queen f5, my opponent resigned, and in the end, we managed to win the match with 4-2. to two. 
and actually also stayed in the Austrian Bundesliga, much to my delight. So very happy about that and also happy about how this game went after all. Despite being all prepared in the opening, I managed to post problems and then my opponent at this critical moment just chose the, the wrong plan, underestimated my attack and the attack itself just went very smoothly. All the moves were quite natural and Black just couldn't couldn't hold everything together. So I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis. If you have any questions, as always, just let me know in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then, well, you're very much invited to do so to get notifications, updates when I publish future videos. So I would say that's all from me today. And I talk to you guys very soon. Bye bye.